The year is 2002. Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, the first Pokemon games on the Game Boy Advance, were released. The next mainline games, Diamond and Pearl, would not be released for another four years. So, of course, Game Freak had plans to release something else in that time frame. Game Freak decided, now that they are on new hardware, it's time to take a look back to the past. Hey everyone, Midas here. I love Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. They are my second favorite games in the series, right behind Gold and Silver, and are my favorite Pokemon remakes. And before you start getting mad about that statement, let me clarify that I haven't played Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver yet, although I would absolutely love to play those games someday. Now, let's just get into talking about how incredible of a remake Fire Red and Leaf Green are, and how these games are easily, without a shadow of a doubt, the best version of Kanto. First of all, I want to thank Bulbapedia a lot for the information found in this video. It's a super helpful source for Pokemon information. There isn't much to say about the story since not only is it a Pokemon game, you know, you already don't have a ton of story there, but it's a remake of the very first Pokemon games. The story is just as entertaining as it was in the original, but there is one thing I want to add here. One of the biggest points I have about how great this game is, is how it's not just a one-to-one -one remake. A huge example of that is the Sevi Islands. After beating Blaine, you can visit the first three islands of the archipelago. It's completely optional, which is great for players who want to just beat the game, and if you do it, you do a small side quest and then return to where you were before. In the post-game, you can return to the Sevi Islands and then start going to more islands if you've gone the National Pokedex. There's also a mini plot where you have to deal with members of Team Rocket that don't know that Giovanni has disbanded the team. While that is a very fun bonus part of the game, that's obviously not the only reason this is the best version of Kanto. Kanto in Gen 1, if you somehow don't know this after nearly 30 years, is an absolute mess. I will say this, it is an impressive accomplishment that a game of that scale was able to work on a console from 1989, but I am definitely stretching the meaning of the word work. There's countless glitches that completely shatter the game, and tons of super dumb mechanics which were made by complete accident. You can level up Pokemon to level 255! You can clone Pokemon! Pokemon have a 1 in 256 chance to miss 100% accurate moves for no reason? You can catch this thing! Some glitches let you fight Mew, a Pokemon that's not supposed to be obtainable! There's a glitch that lets you fight Professor Oak! And remember, every single one of these glitches is doable using just the game itself with no cheating software or hardware. And while these glitches are super fun and part of those games charm, it is nice seeing a version of Kanto that doesn't have nearly as many problems and that feels like it isn't being held together by duct tape, bubblegum, and dreams. And while I do think the Let's Go games are some of the better games of the Switch era, I feel like they don't really compare to these games challenge-wise. Pokemon games aren't very difficult, but the Let's Go games are especially easier to go through since the catching mechanic can level up your team super fast and easily. And also, the rival is just lame. No one even remembers his name. I just tried to remember it, I couldn't. Fire and Leaf Green benefit from being made during what's considered by a lot of people the golden age of Pokemon from Gen 3 to 4 or 5. Obviously, there's a ton of people that love Gen 1 and 2, but with the hardware of the Game Boy Advance and later on the DS, you can tell this is when Game Freak really got into their stride. The remixes of Generation 1 and even some Generation 2 music is absolutely incredible, but that's not much of a surprise. If there's one thing that's always consistently great about Pokemon, it's the music. Another thing that's great to see in this game is a bunch of modern mechanics such as move tutors, abilities, held items, and countless other features from Generations 2 and 3 being in this game. And one feature in particular that I absolutely love about this game is the VS Seeker. It allows you to, after a certain amount of time, rematch Pokemon trainers in areas of the game, and it helps to make training your Pokemon so much more efficient compared to other games where this isn't available. Because, come on, let's be real here, no one wants to spend two hours playing Pokemon just grinding. There is one positive thing I want to talk about, but it does come with a tiny complaint. Once you get the National Dex, you can get multiple Pokemon from other generations in this game, and you can also get the new evolutions of old Pokemon. But one thing that I find kind of weird is that if you have a Pokemon that can evolve into a later generation Pokemon, it won't evolve until you have the National Dex. I get that they wanted to keep the main game more like the classic games with just the original Pokemon, but I still find it a bit odd. 
This game is super replayable. With what I've already said about rematches, more Pokemon, and the Sevi Islands, well, there's even more stuff to do, such as being able to read information about characters in the Fame Checker. Once you get the National Dex, the Elite Four will have updated teams when you fight them. There are many games besides the ones from the original games. In a game corner found the Sevi Islands, one of the legendary beasts can be found in the wild, and Moltres has a completely new location where it is found. These are all pretty small things, but when they're all combined, it really adds up and shows how much care was put into these games. These games did an incredible job of setting the standard for what Pokemon remakes should be. While I haven't played Heart Gold and Soul Silver, pretty much everyone knows that those games did an incredible job of bringing games that were incredible products of their time into the modern era of gaming. This is what remakes should be. This should be a further evolution of what came before, not just here's the game again, bye. At that point, you might as well just point the original game. Um, uh, wait a minute, let me look at my script. Cough, cough, brilliant diamond. Cough, shining, pearl, cough. Anyway, if you haven't played the Kando games before, and you want the best experience, get this game and a Game Boy Advance or one of the early versions of the DS. Or you could just, you know, wait, 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 that was a joke, I was joking, that was a- That is going to be it for now. I hope you all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. <laughs>